We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and welcome back to From the DMs. We haven't been here for a while. We haven't. We, we're in our DMs every day, but we haven't revisited oh, it yes. with, the, with the podcast recently so this is exciting and this is one that I've been looking forward to recording for a long time even though I thought we would be doing something like this in July or August yeah but here we are in April recording this a few months early um it is our silly season silly speculation yes um and from the dms is our series where we basically take conversations that we feel really passionate about or that we just keep going back to in our DMs and inflict them on you, our listeners. Um, our first from the DMs episode was, is Max Verstappen ruining the sport of Formula One, um, which you can check out if you're watching on YouTube linked up top. And if you're listening to it, just, I don't know, search. I don't know. Do the there, legwork there, yourself. Really, there's really just not a great way to, to point out specific episodes in, no. uh, in like just listening to a podcast. But if you're on the YouTube channel, it's there. And just subscribe to the YouTube channel anyway, because then you get to see our faces as we speak. Exactly. So obviously this also comes at a really fun time because today, as we record on Friday, April 26th, just announced Nico Hulkenberg is going to Sauber next year. Yes. And and we were just talking about this, but I feel like there isn't a silly season like normal where it happens really over the summer break, everything happens towards the end of the season. I think just 2024 going into 2025 is our whole big silly season. Um, And my big prediction is that we will have a full grid before we normally even start hearing about this. So that would be before the summer break. I think we'll get a full, a full grid. Yeah, I think we're going to have to revisit our our very nebulous content plan for uh, the the August portion of of this year. Um, but yeah, I do agree, and I I just feel like it has been you know impossible to discuss this current season without also discussing next season. Like it's just there. Like next season is already happening now. No, for sure. Which like is kind of annoying and taking away from the season, but it is what it is. I feel like every single race weekend, a lot of the coverage is on what's happening for next season, where people are going to go for next season, who, what teams still have spots open or confirmed. So it's very, very much overlapping. So with that said... Should we go through our our speculation of the 2025 grid early on in the 2024 yeah. season? Right. I mean, it's it's the end of April and we're talking about next year because, like, you know, we just can't help ourselves. But yeah, so we are going to um, talk about where we seriously think everybody is going to go. And as um, we have done all season long with all of our predictions, I have my predictions. Emily has her predictions and they're in secret. So we're going to I mean, I'm, pro- I, I'm going to assume that we're going to not surprise each other a lot. Um, I think I have one or two curveballs. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think you and I are going to be for the most part on the same page. Obviously, there's there are a few teams that are not going to have a lot of movement um, that have not been confirmed yet. We've got eight confirmed drivers who are out of contract uh, or or not out of contract so far, um, including two full time. Yes, yes, yes. And because you know, I like to have a little fun, Catherine. I think you might be surprised by some of mine, but they're not like completely far fetched of what could possibly happen. Um, but I just, I had to have a little fun with it. So sure, sure, sure. You know. All right. So let's start kind of in the order that we have confirmation. So Ferrari next year will be Charles and Lewis. We all know that McLaren will be Lando and Oscar. We all know that. So then let's get into your beloved Red Bull. So Max is confirmed and there's still an open seat for next season. We've been talking a little bit about the options on some of our other podcasts, but who? Who do you like realistically think will will take that seat? So obviously going back to last season, the the realistic competition for for Checo Perez's seat was Checo Perez, Daniel Ricardo. And then now it's become Checo Perez, Daniel Ricardo ish, not really at the moment, and Carlos Sainz. That said, considering the way 
Perez has been performing this season. And obviously he has these portions of every season where he like, you know, dips a little bit or last season, a lot of it. Um, but right now he's showing good performance. He's showing good connection with the car. Um, and like that they have been saying, you know, like Red Bull camp has been saying, um, they don't necessarily know if they can beat Sauber's offer to Carlos or not Sauber, Audi's offer to Carlos. Um, I think that they're going to stick with what they know and they're going to stick with Checo. Yeah, I, so this one's hard for me, really hard. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see like the anguish in my face from thinking. (laughs) Um, I know it'll be Checo, but I want it to be Carlos. You know what I mean? Just because, I mean, you guys know Carlos is my favorite driver and I want him to go to a, a good team because he's driving super, super well. Um, I agree with you that it's Checo, but I, I don't want it to be Checo. And not right, because and right. not because of Checo, but because of Carlos. Right, exactly. Like, you know, if Carlos goes to Sauber or, God, Sauber, Audi, whoever the hell they are, um, then that, you know... He, he's not going to have a good time next season. Neither is, is Hulkenberg. That car is, is not good and will not be good next year. So it, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's a really big gamble. Hulk is taking a gamble. Um, whoever is going to be in that second seat with him at, at um, Audi is, is going to take a gamble and hope that with the new regulation in 2026, that they're going to have a competitive car that they don't have right now. Yeah. Agreed. So we'll see all right well i this is on in all honesty this is the seat i'm most excited to see get filled yeah yeah agreed it'll be it'll be interesting to see a when they announce and b the duration of the agreement oh yes yes so moving on from red bull we have aston martin and this one like depending on your views on things you could say is fully confirmed or not um Lance has this, you know, daddy contract where if he wants to drive, he has a seat. So this one's also interesting because I don't know truly if he wants to be there. And I know Stro- uh, Daddy Stroll's like getting um, pressure to remove Stroll from the seat just because he has not been performing great. Fernando's really out out driving him this season. Unfortunately, as mu- again, as much as I don't want to see Stroll on the grid at all because I think he's extremely boring. Um, I think this will be um, um, Stroll. Yeah, I also pick pick Lance and I I agree with you. And I think that um, there so there are rumors swirling that uh, Daddy Stroll is going to be selling a stake, um, an ownership stake of the team, a minority stake um, to I don't remember the name, but some some other ownership, um, you know, consortium. Um, And I think that that could be an incentive of, you know, hey, maybe we get a different second driver in that seat. Um, but like we said in our, um, a couple episodes ago, you know, speculating when Honda comes back on to join with Aston Martin in 2026, this could mean a different non Lance Stroll driver, um, or even a completely different team. If, if Fernando decides that he doesn't like the new regulation. Um, and that could be where, you know, I, you know, my, my little, my little far out idea of like Yuki Sonoda coming yes. in and moving to Aston Martin and away from the Red Bull family. Um, but as and we've of talked right about now, that 20... too. We've talked about Yuki going to Aston Martin. I mean, everyone jokes that the Aston Martin is just a green Red Bull. So it's like still part of the mm-hmm. Red Bull family, let's say. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, and we've, we've talked about it before. We've both agreed like Yuki going there doesn't necessarily make sense for him and Fernando to be teammates. Um, I'd love to see that. But it makes yeah. sense with the partnerships and stuff with Honda because he does drive for Honda. Exactly, exactly. So so the, it's right now, I think that should Lance Stroll's seat be at risk? Yes. But is it? No. Correct. Yeah. Well, so 25? No. We'll see about the Maybe this could regulation. be a boring episode, Catherine, if we just keep agreeing on everything. <laughs> I, it could be, um, but we, we, we shall see. We shall. All right, Mercedes. So Georgia's seat is confirmed. And then a seat opened up because Lewis left for Ferrari back in February. Um, mm-hmm. So, Catherine, who do you have joining George at Mercedes? 
So this is where my predictions kind of veer off a little bit. We're going to, I'm going to start and we're going to go through and finish with the teams with my, my version one. And then I'm going to add in my version two when we're done. Okay. But right now, based on the grid that I've created, <laughs> I think this seat goes to Kimmy Antonelli. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I have a version where it doesn't go to Kimmy Antonelli. But right now, I think it goes to Kimmy Antonelli because of the position that Mercedes is in. They're not a top team right now. I mean, they're behind one of their customers significantly in the standings at the moment. They're way behind McLaren. So I think that instead of farming Kimmy off to Williams for a couple of years to learn like George did, I think that they're just going to start him off right, you know, at in Mercedes, because what what's the what's the harm? That's gonna be so great for the the teamwork on that. Like George is gonna I be know. like, I had to sit my ass in a Williams for so many years. You get a seat <laughs> at Mercedes right away. Oh god. Yeah. Um. Okay. I understand your your thoughts. Um. So I have Carlos here, which just let me back. Into okay. It. Just let me back into it. Okay. We we need to do some al- some F one algebra here. So, <laughs> if Carlos doesn't get the Red Bull seat because Checo keeps his seat, he can't go to Ferrari, he can't go to McLaren, and I don't see him going to Aston Martin because that seat, I think, is just locked down by Stroll. Right. So, if you look at the options, you have Alpine, RB, Haas, Williams, and Sauber. Of that, what's the best seat available? It's Mercedes. And I think Carlos, like, even though it's come out that – you know, Audi is going to throw a bunch of money at people. They went and got Hulk, who's just a reliable driver, isn't amazing, isn't horrible, but he's just very average. I don't think Carlos wants to be average. And Mercedes does have, you know, in recent history, a great car. They have been struggling, but they have a lot of money to throw at the problems, right? Where sure. Audi may not necessarily have as much of a budget and as much as many resources, let's say, as a new team to the grid. So with that being said, Carlos isn't leaving the grid because he's too good of a driver not to have a seat, especially after this 100%. season. And I think Mercedes has the money to pony up and give him like a solid contract yeah yeah it it could be I know that you know when when we talked about Lewis leaving Mercedes um part of the reason why was that they did not want to give him the contract terms um to to stay and especially to stay as long as as Lewis wanted to because Lewis wanted to be you know like the forever guy with Nicky Lauda um but I think that they can they can afford a longer Carlos contract if he chooses to go to Mercedes. Right. And like, yeah, Lewis has a ton of world championships, but he's also 40. He's older. He, you know, Lewis is looking more for security. Carlos is like, hey, if you want to give me a one-on-one contract, whatever, that's fine. I'll prove myself on why I should stay longer. Whereas I think Lewis was, it was more like he was insulted that he wasn't getting the security because of like his past achievements. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think Mercedes made a really bad call to not give him the contract that he, you know, or to not even be close to the contract that Lewis was looking for because now he has taken all of that and is is packing up his things and going into Ferrari. And I think that whether or not he has a great time at Ferrari remains to be seen, but I think that it is still a major loss for something that, you know, is so synonymous with Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, so... Next, we have Alpine, and I'm going to be honest, yeah. I could care less who takes these seats. Right? Same. <laughs> like, you could put the Botas Joe ghosts before they had their actual, you know, <laughs> yeah. race suits on. You could put them in the car, and I'd be like, great. So glad they're there. Um, I think the team knows they're struggling internally. Like they've had so many corporate structure changes. They've had a lot of, you know, car changes. Everything is all over the place. Um, right. So with that being said, I think the team, I would like the team to kind of own their shit and say, hey, Akon Gasly, we have not given you good cars. Let's try again. You know what I mean? So I think, I truly think Alpine's going to stay Akon and Gasly. I, I, I completely agree. Um, I, I think that, you know, French outfit, French team, France, right. France, France. Um, and, France, and you're France. right. 
<laughs> they they just you know they need that consistency they cannot break in a new driver until they have a car that can function right, right. so yeah alpine stays Auk on gasly yep. all right now we can move on and we don't have to waste any more time on alpine um yes, so I... visa cash app red racing bulls red bull whatever v carb the yes. jv of the red bulls if we will um Correct. this one was hard for me so i want to hear what you have to say um yeah this this one was was hard for me to just be from a like okay what it i'm i'm going to i'm going to turn that back around it wasn't really that hard um but it hurts a little bit um but at yeah. the same time i know that this is what's probably going to happen and i'm you know i'm i'm seeing yuki sonoda and liam lawson, lawson. next yep. year yep yeah I, that's that's what it is. So hard for me, and it hurts my heart. But I don't think Danny's getting a seat at Visa Cash App next year. Um, not unless something completely turns around, right? You but know, the thing is, is that the dominoes have already started to fall. Correct. And seats are going to need to be filled by drivers, and I don't think anyone's going to have the luxury of seeing a lot more of the season. Yeah, there, there's, there's not a lot of time left for wait and see, which affects Dan. And Daniel's not the only one who's going to be affected by um, the wait and see approach. But I, I really think that you know Liam has proven himself to be a really good driver, and this might be Daniel's time to follow the rest of Formula One to IndyCar. I don't know. I don't know what's next for him. Surprisingly, I still have him on my grid, but I won't tell you where yet. Ooh, but interesting. I, know. I don't think it's realistic though. Okay. Just because I think he is either going to drive for Christian Horner in the Red Bull family or he's not going to drive at all. Right. So, but we'll see. But we'll see. All right. Haas. So, my Haas <laughs> grid for my, my Haas pairing. Do we have more F1 algebra? <laughs> No, I don't have F1 algebra yet. Um, is and and this is actually going to stay even with my 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 version two. Um, is Kevin Magnuson? Because um, I don't think that they have anybody better to replace him with. And Ollie Behrman, yes, yes, okay. I was going to yes. say, yeah. I just think that with Hulkenberg leaving, they and they they need to have a little bit of consistency. And yeah, K Mags isn't great, but there also isn't a lot of stock of available drivers to replace. You know, Kevin Magnuson with like we're we're in a we're in one of those years where there really aren't a lot of drivers banging down the door. And even Ollie, you know, we love Ollie. He had a great performance in in, in Saudi, but. Ollie does need to pick it up a little bit in the F2 race in the F2 championship um, or it might be a little iffy. No, I, I completely agree. Um, I mean, Ollie did really, really well. And I think he proved that he can do it. I think he'll benefit, you know, being able to be the young driver and get more laps in for both Ferrari and Haas, just like they did last year. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I really want to see him on the grid. He's really young, and I think he'll do really well. Um, I just struggle with how Haas has brought rookies onto the grid. Like, they kind of just throw them to the wolves, and they don't give them a, a great car. Maybe it's changed now that, you know, next year will be way into the current regulation, so the car will be not a first, you know, year regulation car. They'll have a little bit of an idea, at least, what's going on. So I just hate having rookies come in and – just crashing and burning and only doing one year because they didn't have a good car. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, exactly. And, you know, I think that there have been some changes, you know, I think Haas has proven this year so far, obviously five races in, what do we know um, that they, that they've got a little bit more on top of things. And I think that Komatsu, you know, not to say that he would handle another rookie better than, um, than our favorite Gunther Steiner, but I do think that Kamatsu is going to handle a rookie coming on differently with also the lessons learned of everything that they had to go through de dealing with Nikita Mazepin and Mick Schumacher together. Yeah. So will there be some growing pains for, for Behrman? Will Haas do Haas things sometimes? Yes. Um, but it gets him on the grid and gives him, you know, gives Ollie time and experience before he, you know, ultimately ends up moving to Ferrari if that happens. Right. 
which if Lewis decides to bow out at some point within the next few years, um, not to say that Lewis will, but if he does, then Ollie's a perfect fit to, to not, you know, go right after. Right. And that was my next point too, is like Haas is a good, you know, launch pad, but I don't know where he would go from that because I mean, Charles and Lewis are locked in for a little bit at Ferrari, so. Well, then it, it comes a little bit of a Pierre Gasly thing where Pierre Gasly was at, you know, AlphaTauri Toro Rosso yeah. forever, and yeah. then the seat at Alpine opened up, and he's like, you just jump ship. Viva la France. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that, you know, Haas can afford Ollie for a few years. No, that's fair. That's fair. All right, and moving to Williams. So this one really hurt my heart, and we're going to go back and do some F1 algebra here, which is now my catchphrase. So I want nothing more than Alex Albon to be on a good team. He's driving really, really well, but he just doesn't fit in anywhere. So I have him still at Williams, even though I don't want him there. Like, I would love to have him be at Mercedes. You know what I mean? Right. Um. But I just, I don't see it. So I have Alex and Kimmy at Williams. Okay. Because you, so, you had Kimmy Antonelli at Mercedes. I have him at Williams. I do. And so the same thing kind of with Haas and Ferrari, where like Haas is the feeder team into Ferrari, potentially. Williams is the feeder team into Mercedes. I don't think that they're going to put a 17-year-old at Mercedes. They could, but I don't think He'll they will. He'll be 18 by the time he gets you know semantics gets the, Catherine semantics. You know what I mean. yes but that that is that is a a, a rule in the super license the, that is part of the max Verstappen rule in the super license is you have to be 18 by the, your first f1 race or you have to get like um, extreme approval granted for situational right. whatever whatever um yeah. so that's that's what I have I I don't know I I still don't know I mean I know Kimmy's like this you know second coming of Max Verstappen, but I just don't know if he'll make his debut next year. I know that's what all the chatter is, but I, don't I know. feel like he's going to make his debut. It's just a question of, is it going to be at Williams or is it going to be at Mercedes? Yeah. But also, I mean, James Vowles seems like such my man, James, mm-hmm. um, like such a level headed, really strategically well thought out individual. And I wonder if he very very slim chance here and will stop me if I'm getting ahead of myself but I think he also may look again to re-sign Logan Sargent just because he is improving from last year and James talked a lot about of like investing in the drivers investing in the team and really like investing for the future so sure. I wonder if he's like hey we've only had him for two years let's let's do it again and just keep building him up as a driver and helping the car get better and all succeed together. So I don't know. Yeah. This one, this one that's, it's a good thought. Yeah. I think that, um, this, the, you know, the, the second William seat is one of the few seats that are wait and see, um, yeah. that, you know, cause Mercedes can wait until, um, Williams makes a decision to announce Kimi Antonelli wherever Kimi Antonelli is going. Um, if they're, if, if the options are Mercedes Williams for Antonelli. Um, and I think that Alex could, you know, I also have him at Williams, but I think that Alex could potentially be the darkest of dark horses for like a real curveball if he doesn't stay at Williams. I think he will, um, mostly because it's a drive. He's the, the lead driver and they are a team that, barring this year's little, we don't have enough parts for a third chassis, is continuing to develop along the, the long-term plans that Vows has for the team. Yeah. That said, here's my curveball. One of my curveballs. Um, goodbye, Logan Sargent. And this, I cannot take complete credit for this, by the way. Uh, but here, here, my thought, and I, I agree with this when I, as soon as I saw it, is Joe Guanyu. Forgot about Joe. Oops. <laughs> oh, what was I thinking? I don't like that, but. Okay. I, I yeah. So, so, offer. so I fully, I fully took this from Julian Palmer, who they they were doing a um, you know twenty twenty five grid speculation in the um, Chinese 
um, qualifying pre-show um, over the weekend. And I was like, oh, that's a great option if he doesn't stay at Sauber. It's probably his only option. Um, but I was like, oh, yeah, that that does make sense. And the, the pairing of Albon and Joe could lead to a pair of decent performances at Williams next year. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I did a dumb. <laughs> Who did Oops. a dumb of the week? Me. You, um, you forgot. No, I think that makes sense. I forgot about Joe. I can't believe I did. Because I've been talking all this time about how he can't leave the grid. He's so good for the grid. And I have removed him from the grid. What Oops. am I doing? Joe, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, no, that makes sense. And I guess the, why I'm saying this is because at Sauber, which will be Audi, we have mm-hmm. Hulkenberg confirmed. But then I have Danny. Oh, Hulk and Ricardo at yeah. Sauber. Yeah. Oh. I know. And I was like. That's so interesting. Oh, this could be interesting. But now that I remember Joe, I think that makes more sense. So but you think Joe would stay at Sauber if. If it's not Danny, it would be Joe. Because I forgot about him. Okay. But I kind of like Hulk and Danny Rick. That could Audi. be really interesting together. Yeah. My pick for, where is my pick? My, my pick is Carlos. I, I, I think Carlos is going to take the deal. How can you do that um, to him? He's going to do it to himself. He's going to go for the money. And then I'm just going to lose exactly. all respect for him because you should want to, you know, play for the good team, take a little bit of a pay cut and then win and then get a second really good contract like everyone knows that's how it works but he's gonna take the money and i'm yeah i yeah he he, well he's gonna take the money and also he has the team boss at audi um they were together at mclaren when carlos was driving for mclaren um so it's one of those like he knows what he's getting they're bringing in a lot of good bodies and you know it it just kind of is the logical answer no i know i just don't like it and i refuse to accept it so yeah um okay so then my version two i have three teams that are different every everything else stays the same okay but hear me out it's a little it's a little ridiculous but i think it's still you know reasonable and not the you know we have our unreal unrealistic teammate pairs that we that we want to see which we'll get to in a minute but i think this is still reasonable enough I have at Mercedes, George Russell, and SD Bestie. Yeah, I don't – I – um. okay, then who do you have at Alpine? Alpine, I have Pierre Gasly and their reserve driver, Jack Doohan, I, who I think is one of the, the – that would be yeah. his chance to come on. Um, he kind of filled the role that Oscar Piastri – um, left when Oscar was, you know, moving to to McLaren, and then this is this is my Mercedes doesn't want to take Kimi Antonelli route, where in this case, um, Kimi Antonelli would go to Williams with Alex Albon. Like I said, yeah, okay, yeah, and then I think that that Joe would be off the grid, unfortunately. I know. I that that's, that's the that, thing. That, it's that, like there's, there's no so many again. moving parts, but there's only 20 seats. So trying yeah. to like figure it all out. Yeah, it's just it's it's really hard. So I but I I think that the the only reason why I think that this is is legitimate is because Alpine has a viable not on the grid driver that, you know, has experience but isn't, you know, a 17 soon to be 18 year old rookie um like Kimi Antonelli or like Ollie Behrman right well and that's another alternative that I that I was thinking of originally and then I completely forgot about Joe is mm-hmm. is putting Joe at Haas with K-Mags right right and that, not having that could Ollie definitely be a thing not having Ollie come to the grid yet because I mean Haas is always looking for money <laughs> because they're poor and Joe yeah. brings a ton of money to the grid with him. So yeah, exactly. that would really, really help out Haas. Because, like, Ollie's not bringing anything to the table from my understanding. Maybe he is. Maybe I'm wrong. But I know that Joe brings so much money from China um, that he... Yeah, he, he's now got, like, a, a burger sponsorship. I think it's, like, McDonald's. I don't know. But the he 
has a lot of visibility on him. Um, so mm-hmm. I could see Haas jumping at that opportunity too. Yeah, that that could be a, a viable. They're just there's so few viable in our opinion landing points for Joe, which is really unfortunate because he's such a good driver, but he's been stuck his entire career at Sauber. Right. Like I would love for him to get an Aston Martin. You know what I mean? Like I feel like he oh, would be yeah. much better than Lance. Um but I I don't see that. That would happening. kick off a whole lot of, of things. But yeah, and then to to lead into who would be off the grid for my my uh, you know version one, that would mean that Botas is off the grid, Logan Sargent's off the grid, and Daniel Ricardo's off the grid, who are three drivers that, you know, I, I do think we love to see them but probably won't much longer. Yeah. Uh, if, if anything, I think Botas is for sure off the grid. Like, he's kind of riding into the sunset. He doesn't seem super into it like he was when he was racing at Mercedes. He's um, the Kimi Raikkonen of the grid right now. Right. And I think he's just kind of sunsetting and, you know, leaving on a, a fun note. I don't know. But I think yeah. that one for sure he's – He's not coming back. Logan Sargent, I don't think, is going to be able to come back. Unless, like I was saying, you know, James Wiles decides to stick with the game plan and keep the same team, same lineup, and really just work on improvements with the cars. Right. Um, and not taking on an 18-year-old rookie. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then it's between Daniel and Joe, honestly. Yeah. For yeah. Me. I mean, the – there there are a couple really narrow opportunities for, for Daniel. I don't think he's going to go to Haas. Um, I just, you know, they, Haas already kind of sort of not really tried that when he, you know, when he was available after leaving McLaren. Um, but I, I just don't see it. Ha- I, I see it happening less now unless Lance leaves and, you know, daddy strolls like, Hey, I'll take, I'll take the Aussie. Um, but I, I don't really like that's, that doesn't seem very likely to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I could now, now that you've said it, I could see a really weird thing happening that leads to Daniel going to Sauber, but then, then Carlos would just have to go to, to Mercedes. Yeah. Honestly, the thing that makes me really upset is if Carlos's agent doesn't play this right, he could wind up without a C next year. I don't think he will, because I think the teams are also, you know, aware of the fact that he's one of the best unsigned drivers right now. And there, you know, there are plenty of teams that would be stupid not to take him. And I don't think that they're going to leave it to the summer to determine where he's going to go. Yeah. I don't know. But then also, so speaking of just who could be off the grid, let's let's play Emily's devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Carlos gets the Red Bull seat. Is Checo going anywhere or is Checo off the grid? Oh, I I think Checo's off the grid. If I I think it's Red Bull or bust for for Perez. You know, he's he's had such a long storied career, but he has also had such a long storied career right. that I think that, that this would be you know, when when he's done at Red Bull, he will go off into the sunset with his fourteen thousand children. He only has like four, right? I think it's five Jesus at this point. Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, because that's like that was kind of my question too. Of like, where do I? There's again, there's only so many seats. We'll get so many rookies next year. Um, because I don't see the grid staying the same. Like, I don't think we'll all. We're not going to have another year. year of yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that was what an interesting question I was asking myself is like, where does he go? Cause he is a good driver. Like I could somehow see him landing at Haas, like if he had to, but I don't think he would want that seat. I think he'd rather leave the grid. Yeah, no, there, cause there's such a, like, there's what five good teams and five not good teams and the drivers who are out of a seat in those top four or five teams are not going to go to like the eight, nine team just for the sake of staying on the grid. Well, like I get it. Saying, love for like, the sport. That's what I'm saying about Carlos though. Like, I don't think he'll go to Audi Sauber or whatever we want to call them. Because I think that's a different. Team. I think that's a different situation because they're gambling on the potential of Audi being competitive in the new regulation. But is it worth that gamble? 
if they're gonna pay him, then yes. It's not about the money. It's about oh, it's about the money. Lo- no, I, Lewis I Hamilton is getting a hundred million dollars a year to drive a a Ferrari turtle. <laughs> Well, right now he's driving a, a Merc turtle, so. um, Yeah, big time. Um, So now for some pairings that we would love to see. Oh, wait, before we get into pairings we'd love to see, I want to talk really quickly about rookies that we probably won't see next year. And there's one rookie in specifically that I don't know who it is, but unless Antonelli and Behrman win the F2 championship, I do not think we will see the F2 champion move up into Formula One. Oh, 100% agree. 100%. Yeah. 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 So with that said, now let's move on to some some unrealistic pairings that we would love to see, but probably won't. Okay, my question to you is, I did not change the confirmed drivers, which means I do not have anything with like Lewis or Charles or Lando or Oscar because they're confirmed at Ferrari and McLaren. So I only did this with open seats. I did one with a non-open seat. Okay. I did one. Yeah. Oh, um, nice. I only have four teams. How many How many teams did, did you do? Because I only have four teams that I picked. I Honestly, I only have two. Okay. But, um, and these are just like fun. Yeah, I I, I agree. These are just like would be kind of ridiculous if they happen, but would also be, you know, kind of entertaining. Yeah. Um, so what, what is, what is your well, first one? So I lied. I, I kind of have three. So Carlos with Max at Red Bull. Agreed. I want to see that. Like, I think yeah. he, if anyone could on the grid, give him a run for his money, it would be Carlos. Um, but I also have Carlos and Fernando. Oh, that Aston would Martin. be fun. I would love to see those two together. Absolutely love to see those two together. They're countrymen. They get along well. At least we think they do. Um, and I think it would be really, really fun to see them race together. Yeah, I, I agree. That that could be really fun. Fun and funny. And then the last one I have is at Visa Cash App, Yuki mm-hmm. and Joe. Ooh, that would be very interesting. Right, because I just feel like they're such polar opposites, but I think they're both really young. I know Yuki's been racing for so many seasons, and I keep saying he's, like, in his second season. I know I'm wrong, but I feel like they're two young drivers, and I think it would be really interesting to see how they race together. Yeah, that would be fascinating, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So mine are... Yuki leaves the Red Bull family early and joins Aston Martin. And we have Yuki and Fernando together. Oh, my God. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. I, I know I we've think been that talking be... about it, but, like, I love it. I do. Yeah. Peak, peak, peak hilarity right there. Um, for Red Bull, I have the dream of a Max and Daniel reunion. Um, because I, I would just, I would really, you know, I, I really don't think we're going to see it. But I would have really loved to see, like... A little older, a little bit more mature Daniel um, and, you know, Max, who's a savant together, you know, driving together again. I think that would have been, re- you know, that would have been really nice. Yeah. Um, and then for Sauber, not on the grid, I would take Hulk and Mick Schumacher to have the German family of drivers. Oh, the big bad German team. Yeah. Yeah. It, Audi is German. Hulk is German. Schumacher is German. There you go. Hopefully, Ralph Schumacher will keep quiet in the press. Honestly, um, he's killing his nephew's chances of coming back to the grid. Yeah, I mean, even even now, it's go away, Ralph. Yeah. Um, and that for for context, Ralph Schumacher is Mick's uncle. Um, and um, let's just say if you've read um, Gunther Steiner's book um, chronicling the the season where um, Mick was teaming up with K Mags um, in 2022, it wasn't pretty between the German media and Gunther based, you know, and, and primarily it was because of a lot of pitchforking from Ralph yeah. um, who, you know, of course is a formula one driver is, is, is Mick's uncle has lots of experience, et cetera, et cetera. And then my last one, and this is, um, th- this does bump a confirmed driver out. So obviously it's not something we're going to see unless something real weird happens. Um, but I would love to see Lando and Alex driving together at McLaren. 
Oh, I like that. Yeah. Is it ever going to happen? Probably not. But I think that they would seem well together. Um, I think McLaren is a good place for them to do it. And um, it, you know, it, it could give Alex the opportunity finally to to show off, you know, just how skilled he is again. Because I know. He, I just want to He was good, good at Red yeah, because he was good at Red Bull. The problem is, is that Sergio Perez was available and better. Yeah, I know. Oh, poor kid. Okay, so those are ones that we want to see. Now for ones that we really want to see, but we know it would be the worst teammate pairing. Yeah. So for this one, I, I just smashed together anybody. I wasn't, like, actually trying to, you know, leave the confirmed teams alone. Um Yeah. I want to see Lewis and Max or Lewis and Fernando. Yes. I also have Lewis and Max and caveat specifically at Ferrari. Yes. Because I think that would just add some extra seasoning to, um, you know, it, it would be the second coming of Lewis Hamilton versus Nico Rosberg, but worse. Yeah. Um, well, and I also don't, I don't think that Lewis and, uh, Fernando would be good teammates together. I mean, they were teammates. Oh but no, they are now not. good together. So, but I think I'd like to see that at Ferrari as well. Oh yeah, that would be. I I think Marinello would burn if uh if Fernando goes back. Yeah, and especially if if Fernando's teamed up with Lewis. Yeah, I also have for for a nightmare pair. Speaking of, of Fernando, Aston Martin, Lance, and Gasly. Oh I think God. that would just be like oil and water, oh, or oil, you so know, bad. or or water on an oil fire. Um, I just I think that that would be awful. No, I agree. Um, yeah, I don't see that going well. No. Um, another one I have is at Mercedes. I have George and Yuki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mostly because I don't think their personality is going to, like, no work at all. Yuki's a little bit of a hothead in the car, and I can just see George being like, are we not following team orders? Like, what's going on? And Yuki just being like, mur, 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 mur. and then, you know, Toto has to come on the radio and be like, you laugh, no fighting. So purely for radio calls, that's what I want to see. I th- I don't think it would work well at all. Yeah, you know, I I have for for a, a not great pair at Mercedes, George and Botas, because you've got Botas who has a ton of experience with Mercedes and also has a ton of experience being the second driver at Mercedes, and George who most days feels like he's the number one driver at Mercedes now. I think that would just lead to some terrible clashes. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. George is like, Terribly I'm the number hilarious. one guy in this group. And, and Valtteri's like, be like, excuse me, today. this is my team. Hold my beer. <laughs> oh my God. Hold my gin. I was just going to say, hold my gin. Oh man. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just, oh boy. Oh boy. But no, those were yeah. just some that I was thinking of that would be fun and funny. Yeah. I have one more that would also be bad. Um, and like uh, to, to preface this Alpine already has their nightmare pairing. Let's be real because SD bestie and Gasly don't get along and you know, it's, it's, you know, as we saw for the two whole ass episodes in drive to survive, um, it is a vaunted rivalry. Um, but I also think it would be hilarious to see Gasly and K mags at Haas. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I see, I don't see that one being as bad, but if they're far enough apart on the grid, it would be fine. It would just be a matter of like, if they're racing each other, right. then nope, I, I, I don't think that would go over very well. No, I agree. I agree. Oh my, I thought this would be such a quick episode and it's I did to too. Be a really long one again, but we have so many thoughts and feels, um, just kind of wrapping up on this. Um, my final thoughts are that we will have a full set grid before the summer break, like I said earlier. And yeah. I think the next domino to fall, truthfully, is going to be the Red Bull. Interesting. Yes. Just because Checo's come out and said, like, I want to know what's happening in a month. I should know in a month. Like, I think it's right, coming right, right. out yeah, yeah, soon. Yeah. Um, and, like, if Alpine comes out tomorrow and is like, we're confirming both drivers for next season, like, I don't care. Whatever. That's, that's not a domino. Um, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be the Red Bull seat. 
Speaking of dominoes, my final thought is somebody on Twitter, um, which I don't do Twitter for a lot of reasons, but somebody on Twitter did say um, that Hulk's signing at Sauber was the first domino of the 2024 season. And I'm like, bro, it is easily the fourth or fifth. Yeah. No, it's not the first. Yeah, not even close. But yeah, I I think that either Checo or Carlos, I think we will know in the coming weeks. Um, And I think that there are some opportunities for some real shockers that aren't already known shockers, um, depending on what Aston Martin decides to do and depending on what, you know, what's going to happen between Botas and Joe. That's going to be a real big question. At, yeah. Like if one of those two is going to stay at Sauber or if Sauber is going to be, you know, changing both their drivers. I think that we have a ton of questions. Um, and I don't think that we're going to be able to stop speculating about these questions until the grid is complete. No, I, I agree. And I like what you said, Checo. I feel like Checo and Carlos are like the, the key to this whole thing. Yeah, exactly. So I think if, because like if the Red Bull seat goes to Carlos, then everybody can kind of fall in line. Again, if Checo stays at Red Bull, then Carlos has to pick his spot and then everything else kind of falls in line. Yeah, so it, it will really depend on, on on those seats and also on on what Mercedes is going to do and if they're going to take Kimmy or if they're going to take someone who's not Kimmy and if that person ends up being Carlos um, or not Carlos. There, there's so many There's questions. so many options. I can't. Yeah, it's, like it's funny. There are so many Being a kid options. in a candy store and trying to pick a candy bar. Yeah, it's there's so many options, but there's like so few options at the same time that it's just so hard to see where where things are going to happen. Well, let the chips fall where they may. And until then, you can listen to this episode and provide us with your own thoughts on who's going to be going where in the coming year. Uh, drop those in the comments. It's yeah, are right we Sarah. crazy? Do you agree with us? Do we have no idea what we're talking about? Please let us know. Actually, no. I know this is all speculation. None of this is real except for the actual confirmed ones. This is just, you know, thoughts and feels. So, well, this has been fun. I'm sure we'll have yeah. to do another one of these once we have more seats filled and do do a, an updated silly season, silly speculation. So, we'll yeah. That. Well, that has been another one of our From the DMs episode covering the seats for the 2025 season. Up next, we will have our Miami predictions episode coming out on Thursday. That's it for the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.